Thank you, Acting Speaker. I too stand to speak in support of the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registra Registration Amendment Bill 2019. Uh, this week I had um, the absolute privilege of meeting with some trans and gender diverse people here at Parliament House and their families. Um, it was wonderful uh, to chat to people there and in particular I was taken by a young girl, she must have been about 10 years old, um, that we met there and I looked at her and her face was beaming with um, excitement for her future, that look that, that, that I recognise in my children's face. Um, and I think really for me what this bill is about is, is giving the opportunity to the, that young girl to achieve that future, a future in which she is able to live live a normal life respected for who she is. Sadly, during those conversations, I also heard stories about the pain that people had gone through when this bill was last uh, debated in this House and uh, sadly voted down by those on the other side. Um, I can only imagine having something as personal as your gender identity criticised and denigrated in Parliament must be, have been absolutely uh, devastating. So, first and foremost, Acting Speaker, I would like to acknowledge and welcome our trans and uh, gender diverse community to this House. I pay my respect to you. I admire your strength. I am glad that you are a part of the community that I live in. And more than anything, I am very glad that you are living your lives true to yourselves. Acting Speaker, when it comes to progress, there is one thing that we can always rely upon, and that is that those opposite will always be standing in the way. Whether it's the environment, workers' rights, women, our traditional owners, or minorities, it's the Liberal and National parties that have to be dragged kicking and screaming to the line every time. Back in 2016, this was the case when, once again, the Andrews Labor government first attempted to amend the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act to allow trans and gender diverse Victorians to alter their birth certificates without an expensive, invasive and often unavailable medical procedure. Unfortunately, that reform, one which would have improved the daily lives of trans and gender diverse Victorians markedly, passed this House and then failed in the other place. And why did that bill ultimately fail in the other place? Because the Liberal Party and the National Party steadfastly refused to advance equality in this state. Once again, Acting Speaker, they are failing to back progress and ultimately failing to back the public. On this side, we are committed to supporting and backing the trans and gender diverse community. It seems those opposite are committed to standing in its way. At its core, this bill is about removing a cruel, invasive and at times dangerous and unnecessary barrier to amending birth certificates and allowing them to reflect who all Victorians truly are. Currently, the law requires that before a trans Victorian can change the sex record on their birth certificate, they must undertake an expensive and invasive surgical procedure. For some people, due to other medical conditions, the surgery could be life-threatening. The procedure isn't even always available and the wait can be very long. Many of those from the trans and gender diverse community have waited most of their lives for acceptance. They should not be forced to wait even longer to have surgery before being recognised for who they really are. Those of us on this side seek to ensure these Victorians are able to access documentation that is a true reflection of self. Opponents of this bill must understand that what they are saying is that unless you have the money and the time, you will be left unable to change your birth certificate. Acting Speaker, like many of my colleagues have commented, I too have had many uh, emails and correspondence with my constituents about this bill. Many of them were heartfelt pleas to do the right thing and help them to feel included in the society for who they are. But one email that stood out for me was from Simon, who lives um, in my region. He wrote passionately about what this amendment means to him and the ways in which, in which it would improve his life. Simon wrote, and I quote, 
This affects me personally as a trans man. I am 60 years old and to change my birth certificate to male would require me to have a hysterectomy, which is medically unnecessary and for someone who lives on a disability pension, totally out of my reach financially. This means that unless the law catches up with other states and countries, I will have female on my death certificate. Acting Speaker Simon wants the law to catch up. We on this side want the law to catch up, and that is why I support this bill. The question is, how long will it take those on the opposite side to catch up? The denial of an accurate birth certificate forces trans people to face significant barriers and difficulties in their everyday lives. Um, I have two uh, children and my youngest son is 15, turn, soon to turn 16. And while I was thinking about this bill, I looked back over the last couple of months and I'm minded um, of the things that he and I did together. So we stood in a very busy post office in central Ballarat uh, while a very nice but officious post office woman checked and rechecked his birth certificate. Um, um, he, I then sent him off to the post, same post office, same busy post office a couple of months later with his birth certificate to get his tax file number. And I know that we will go again in a couple of months to a police station with his birth certificate uh, to get his driver's licence. Um, and I'm minded going through that experience. I can only imagine what it would feel like uh, to stand there, to have to discuss uh, your personal life, some of the most personal things with a complete stranger with that nice but officious lady at the post office. <laughs> um. When I met with uh, the families um, and the trans and gender diverse children here this week, I was also really struck by the words of one mother. She described that her 10-year-old daughter had so far been able to fly under the radar, but soon that would no longer be possible. I think about the, the joys of my children in my life, um, and when my boy was 10 years old, watching him blossom into himself, you know, that journey from child to teen. Um, and it breaks my heart, the thought that this uh, trans 10-year-old girl had to fly under the radar when she should have been flying high. It's every child's right. Trans and gender diverse children are at a greater risk of having poor mental health outcomes than their peers. For too long, these children have been used as pawns in a fight that is pitted ideology against what studies have shown is the best for children. We just want to get on and do what is best for these kids. By ensuring a process exists for children to obtain a legal document that affirms their true identity wouldn't be an extraordinarily positive boost to the mental health of trans and gender diverse children. We need to knock down barriers for these kids, not strengthen the ones that have been there. We all know that changing the law will make a huge difference to the daily life and mental health and well-being of trans and gender fluid Victorians without imp impacting on anyone else's. This bill has brought up a lot of debate, much of it based around myth, bigotry and conspiracy. I have yet to hear a reasonable argument against this bill, um, and my two colleagues have alluded to it, but the one that keeps getting to me is this idea uh, that some suddenly people are going to be bursting into single sex change rooms and toilets. Um, look, can I assure them that I have never been asked for my birth certificate when I'm entering a toilet? Uh, the only people that will be affected by, by this bill are those that wish, wish to change their birth certificate. So, in the interests of equality, dignity and inclusion, I commend this bill to the House. Yeah.